Commissioner Hill? Here. Commissioner Burns? Here. Mayor Dyer? Here. Mayor, you have a quorum. Thank you, Madam Clerk. <clears throat> Let's uh, first order business is the minutes from the workshop agenda review and city council Seven. meetings of uh, January 27th. Motion by Commissioner Sheehan, second by Commissioner Stewart. All in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. Okay, Commissioner Ortiz is on the phone with us. I, that's uh, the voice everybody's hearing that uh, is not associated with a physical presence. Thank you for being here, Commissioner Ortiz. And uh, now we have some excitement. We uh, have two of our great high school, high school football teams that had extremely successful seasons ending in Daytona Beach. We need to get those games back here. Absolutely. In Orlando, Absolutely. Um, Edgewater and Jones, and I'm going to call on the district commissioner from each of those areas to introduce the team and speak. And I guess the best way to do it is in alphabetical order. So I'll call on Commissioner Stewart first. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Well, uh, let me share a couple of things with you. Uh, as an Edgewater graduate, I'm excited about this opportunity to recognize the Eagles on their 7A state championship football run. Congratulations. <laughs> Edgewater has a long and proud history of working hard, producing wins, and being a program that builds community. In the past few years, Edgewater seemed, uh, the program seemed to lose its way a little bit, even having a winless season just three years ago. Uh, but overcoming adversity makes the accomplishment, accomplishments even sweeter. And with the leadership of head coach Cameron Duke, Coach Duke, um, building the program back up brick by brick is evident that this is the beginning of another great era for Edgewater football history. Football is so much more than a game played on the field. It teaches discipline and responsibility to its players, and it bridges gaps and brings people and communities together. Watching Coach Duke teach these young men not only about football, but about life and about what it means to be part of something bigger than yourself has truly been inspiring to watch. Good thanks, Coach Duke. I appreciate that. And thanks always for letting me barge in on the sidelines, <laughs> Dr. Shanoff, uh, and get the best view that you allow me to to get on the sideline, I appreciate that. While the mayor's proclamation will tout the many accomplishments of these two great programs, I wanna take the moment to talk about the character of the team. When Coach Andy Johnson of, the, of Boone High School uh, was going through cancer treatments, this team publicly and privately supported him and his family, rivalry aside. That's character and that's what football is all about. Let's be honest, for me, uh, the, all I really care about is beating Bishop Moore and Boone. Sorry, Coach Johnson, if you're listening. Um, so you do those two things, the season is a success for me. But in all seriousness, the, to the team and the coaches, thank you for your hard work and dedication uh, to be mentally and physically, demand, to a mentally and physically demanding sport. I share the pride of our school and your community and your accomplishments and already can't wait until next season. Let me share a couple of quick stats. Overall record was 13 and two. Undefeated at home, beating, if you could, Water Park, Boone, Jones, and Bishop Moore. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, did that come out? I didn't, it slipped out. I'm sorry, I apologize. All right, um, Battle of College Bar Champions, Battle of the Barrel Champions, ranked 49th nationally at the end of the season by a national, uh, by Max Preps. Uh, offensive, uh, Orlando Sentinel's Offensive Player of the Year, Isaiah Conley, where's Isaiah? Stand up, Isaiah. Player of the Year. <laughs> and most importantly, led by a class of 23 seniors that began their career 0 and 10 in 2016. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. The mayor's going to read in a few minutes, and uh, I'm honored just to be among you. Thank you very much. Commissioner Hill. Thank you, Mayor. Well, we welcome the Marty Jones High Tigers. And we'd like to welcome and congratulate Principal uh, Allison Kirby, Assistant Principal Dr. 
Tina Jones, head coach Elijah Williams, and assistant coach Andrea Anderson. Jones High School is the first public school for African Americans in Orlando in 1895. This is our 125th year of celebrating a rich heritage of educating young African Americans. Jones High has a long-standing record and history of excellence and community pride for students, faculty, and staff. As a result, Jones has an extensive list of notable leaders throughout the community, nationally, globally, and also we have Nate and Tim Newton, which were NFL uh, football stars, Judge Belvin Perry, Wesley Snipes, Mayor Jerry Demons, Dr. Jeffrey Redding, our own Walter Hawkins, and of course, Commissioner Bar uh, Bakari Burns, along with myself, and the list goes on and on. Jones High School Alumni Associations and surrounding neighborhoods have served the beloved Jones High as role models to students, giving aid to teachers and personal and awarding scholarships to deserving students towards their collegiate, collegiate journey. So today, we honor Jones High School football team for its amazing success. And yes, we do have this season coming up, Edgewater. <laughs> Which, and this particular team average, grade point average, is 3.02. Yep. And which we are making sure that academics is forced. Absolutely. So as we continue this rich legacy under the leadership and tenure of Coach Elijah Williams at Jones High, 68 young African American men have received full and partial scholarships to prestigious colleges and institutions around this country. And with 17 of the 68 are on this championship season team. So we are extremely proud of each and every one of you. Our Joan High Cubs has been district champions for three consecutive, consecutive seasons, regional champions, and for the first time ever, state run-ups. So you are Jones High history in the making. <laughs> and with that being said, I'd like to turn it over to our And so, Mayor Buddy Dower, read the proclamation. All right. right. All right. You guys make us so proud. It's so great to have um, scholar athletes that play at such a high level. And uh, our meetings are usually a little bit more boring than this. <laughs> proclamation, City of Orlando, Office of the Mayor. Whereas the Edgewater and Jones High School football teams both enjoyed incredible 2019 seasons, advancing to the Florida High School Athletic Association Championship Games, finishing as a state runners-up in Class 7A and Class 5A, respectively. And whereas the Eagles posted a 13-2 record, claimed the district championship for the third consecutive year, and ended the campaign ranked fifth in Florida and 49th nationally. And whereas the Tigers recorded the best season in school history, going 13-2, taking the district title and making their first appearance in the state title game. And whereas Edgewater was led led by head coach Cameron Duke with the support of principal Dr. Mark Shanoff and Jones was led by head coach Elijah Williams with the support of principal Allison Kirby and whereas more than 30 members of the teams have signed national letters of intent to continue their football careers and more importantly their education in college. Whereas the city of Orlando and our entire community is proud of the Eagles and Tigers for their many accomplishments and for how they represented our city on the field in 2019. Now, therefore, we Buddy Dyer, Mayor of the City of Orlando, Robert Stewart, City Commissioner District 3, Regina Hill, City Commissioner District 5, hereby do proclaim February 10th, 2020 as Orlando High School Football Day in the city of Orlando in celebration of these two accomplished teams. <laughs> Okay, for the audience, we did uh, pregame pictures with both teams down in the rotunda. So if I could have the principal administrators and coaches come up, we'll do photographs with a proclamation. All right.
Okay, this month is Black History Month, and we'll be celebrating on Wednesday afternoon here in the Rotunda, and I'd like Georgina to come up and talk about the significance and some of the events that we have. Good afternoon, Mayor. Good afternoon, Commissioners. As you know, this month we celebrate Black History Month, and the Multicultural Affairs Office is leading the efforts with an amazing committee. This multicultural event fathers our continued city's commitment to inclusion, respect, and diversity, and advocating for the human rights and humanity for all. Now, I would like to turn it over to our committee chair, our fantastic Tanika Nisman, to give us uh, more details of the event and this year's theme. <laughs> Good afternoon, Mayor and Commissioners. Uh, we are excited, me as well as the committee who has joined me today to uh, present to you the Black History Month reception. We are doing African Americans in the Vote this year. And what we aspire to do as we started planning for this event is to not only encourage those who have the right to vote today, but those who have the right to vote in the future and understanding their voice and their participation in the process. So we have our Black History Month reception on Wednesday, February 12th at 5.30 in the first floor rotunda. We have Desmond Mead with the Florida Rights Restoration Coalition. We also have uh, Peterson Greer, who is a local artist who will be opening at the Terrace Gallery that night as well following our program. And so we would like to invite you as well as all community members to come out. Um, more so than those individuals, we had over 195 student art submissions. And so, <laughs> and so we want to encourage the community to come out to really support them. We had to narrow it down to nine winners. Uh, all the submissions were amazing. They did a great job. And what we asked them to do is to create an art piece that encouraged their community to come out and vote. And so I'm excited to, we're still working on how to display all those, but I'm excited to uh, be able to display that as well as for the nine winners to come out and the community to show love for them. So I do thank you. And Mayor, if you would read the proclamation. I will do so. Proclamation, City of Orlando, Office of the Mayor. Whereas black history is an integral part of American history because African Americans have played such a role in building and shaping this great country. And whereas Black History Month is celebrated each February and was originated by the Association for the Study of Negro Life and History, founded in 1915 by Carter G. Woodson, an African American historian, author, and journalist. And whereas throughout Black History Month, we recognize the extraordinary achievements and acknowledge the many contributions African Americans have made in our nation, our state, and our city. And whereas the story of African Americans is a story of resilience, perseverance, and achievements with contributions being made in many areas. And whereas the city of Orlando embraces our community's diversity, 
believes in inclusion and acknowledges the invaluable contributions of African Americans to our city as we celebrate Black History Month. Now, therefore, we, Buddy Dyer, Mayor of the City of Orlando, and Commissioners Gray, Ortiz, Stewart, Sheehan, Hill, and Burns do hereby proclaim February 2020 as Black History Month in the City of Orlando. Thank you guys. Thank you, Jones. Okay, we're going to move into the mayor's update, and anybody that's sitting on the side of the room that would like a better seat in the middle, <laughs> feel free uh, to go ahead and move on over. Um, all right, Commissioner Burns, we have this little tradition that we celebrate birthdays here, because we're happy that you were born, and you were born on January 30th, uh, between this meeting and our last one. So. Our tradition is to sing. We don't do it very well, but we do it heartily <laughs> and enthusiastically. So, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Commissioner Burns. Happy birthday to you. Thank you very much. Yeah, we have people that can sing here yeah, that's today. Awesome. That's kind of cool. Um, Okay, anybody here from uh, Valencia? Okay, we have students in the house, so this was kind of an exciting meeting already, right? You guys can come over front and center if you want, get a good view, and if you uh, sit on that side, then you'll get on TV. Okay, show your professor that you're here. Okay, coming up Saturday, the one thing I want to mention is a very fun event, and that's the Orlando Wetlands Festival. Uh, we have a... Um, treatment system that treats tertiary treated wastewater and it's uh, one of the unique uh, wastewater processes in the entire world and people come from everywhere to see it but it's also a great birding sanctuary and people come from all over the world to do that so I didn't tell you I was going to do this Rick but why don't you come up and uh, tell everybody get everybody excited about going to the wetlands festival all right. and tell them where it is because it's not that easy to find quite honestly well, thank you. Um, the Wetlands Festival is at Fort Christmas in uh, Christmas, Florida, and uh, we take people from that area to, to tour the wetlands uh, by bus. And there's lots of exhibits and environmental uh, programs and lots of speakers. We've invited all the commissioners out. Um, 
to speak at noon if you wish, um, or just enjoy the festivities all day from 9 till 3. So we'd love to see you out there. Um, was attended by a little over 4,000 people last year, so we get really good attendance. Uh, and you'll see one of the most innovative wastewater treatment systems in the world. So, thank you. See you. Thank you, Rick. Hopefully, then. Okay, and I want to mention one item that's on the agenda, and that's uh, B8, our OPD Crime Center. Under Chief Roland's leadership, crime continues to go down, and we remain focused on the safety of our residents and our visitors. And on the agenda today, is uh, an item that we're going to be able to leverage tools, technology, and training of our officers and create a crime center at our OPD headquarters that'll integrate real-time data with existing historical data on one central location. So that sounds boring, but it's actually really exciting that we're going to be able to use that technology. So with that, we are going to move on to the consent agenda, and the consent agenda are a number of items that are acted upon through a single vote of council. We uh, give each of the members of the council an opportunity to comment on the consent agenda and update you on important happenings in their district. We rotate the order that we do that, and it just so happens the birthday boy is first up today. Right. <laughs> well, well, thank you, Mayor, uh, Commissioners. Um, and I'd like to say, just say uh, congratulations again to Jones High and Edgewater for their fantastic years. Uh, and just hope they know that their community is behind them, and we're looking for uh, all the great things to come. Uh, also, on February the 4th, <clears throat> uh, my office participated in the Legends Award Ceremony at Eccleston Elementary School, and where we honored uh, Mr. Ron Blocker as the first African-American male to serve as superintendent of the Orange County Public Schools, as well as Miss um, Betty Chandler, who was uh, recognized for, as, with the Legacy Award for her over 45 years of serving the kids at Eccleston Elementary. So it was a grand time, and we appreciate all the work that they do. Um, also, um, I had the privilege of attending the State of the Union as a uh, guest of um, Congresswoman Val Demings. Uh, it was an excellent uh, experience. Had the opportunity to speak about um, a lot of quality, quality of life issues that we're dealing with here in our community homelessness, poverty, affordable housing. Uh, but also one thing that's really uh, important for our region is the uh, steps to end the HIV epidemic. Uh, because unfortunately here in uh, Orlando, Kissimmee, and Sanford, we ranked fifth in the number of new cases of HIV in 2018. Uh, but the good thing is there is a plan. Uh, there are programs like Ready, Set, Prep, uh, test and treat that we're excited to uh, get some funding in our communities to combat this uh, this disease. So uh, excited about being on the front lines of, of all of that important work. Also, Commissioner Hill and I will be hosting a community meeting this evening uh, where we're focusing at some of the uh, concerns, some activities that's been of concern of our youth in our uh, Carver Shores, uh, Richmond Heights, Malibu Grove uh, area. So I'm excited to uh, again be partnering with Commissioner Hill to address this very uh, important and sensitive topic. And that's all I have, Mayor. Thank, thank you. you, Commissioner. Commissioner Gray. Thank you, Mayor. And uh, Commissioner Burns, thank you for representing us in Washington. <laughs> Appreciate that very much. Um, one thing I wanted to mention on uh, last Wednesday, February 5th, with the Neighborhood Crime Prevention Awards Luncheon, thanks to the staff for putting that on. It's really a great event each year. And the OPD team did a great job in doing that. So thanks very much. And uh, one comment on the agenda, and that's uh, under the Mayor A1, the MOU. Uh, with Ola and the Puerto Rican Affairs. I see Anna here. She does a fabulous job representing us through Ola. So thank you, Anna, for all you're doing for that. That's all I have, Mayor. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Ortiz? Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, before I go any further, I want to also congratulate uh, high school, Joan High School in Edgewater. And although there's a great uh, healthy rivalry between the two of them, what I'm really proud of is the fact that we have this great, great athletes coming out of the city of Orlando. I think that's something to be uh, very proud of. Uh, Commissioner Burns, happy birthday. I didn't get to sing because I know I would have taken the whole, uh, the whole space over there. <laughs> um, I'm up in, uh, uh, for those who are watching, I'm up in Tallahassee, uh, representing our city with legislative 
we in uh, there are quite a few items that we keep trying to make sure that we we don't get preempted uh, by the legislature in Tallahassee. So it's paramount that our people get acquainted with what's going on in Tallahassee and uh, call our representatives to make sure that they are um, not only supporting us, supporting our municipality, but representing us correctly. Uh, and so we have to hold our legislators in Tallahassee accountable. In terms of uh, our community, on Friday, January 31st, I had the honor of welcoming the chief of Managua, Nicaragua, Enrique Jose Chavarria's Mesa, to the city of Orlando, along with Orlando Party Department Deputy Chief Ian Davis and Emergency Manager Manny Soto and Mr. Sergio Padilla. We're able to donate uniforms to their city in order for them to continue serving the residents of Managua in terms of public safety. I want to thank uh, Deputy Chief Wales and Deputy Chief Davis for working with us in order to help all the communities around the world. Our guys are not only saving lives here in the city of Orlando, but in other communities around the world too. And that's something to be proud of. On Saturday, February 1st, 34 West Main Street completed a cleanup with more than 65 volunteers. They walked along 34 Road to collect debris and assemble a garden behind Trusco Bank, all in the rain. <laughs> so grateful to have this kind of dedication in our community. Kudos to CFW. On Tuesday, February 4th, I attended ribbon cutting ceremony of El Cilantrillo Restaurant located at 2500 Samaran Boulevard. This is our latest addition to the corridor, which continues to grow, creating jobs and being a great depiction of what the city holds. Congratulations to Iran, Diane, and the Terrell family for a successful event. It's always a pleasure to welcome new business in District 2. I'm looking forward to watching them become a successful story in our vibrant Gateway Orlando District. And last but not least, on Wednesday, February 5th, I attended the Orlando Police Department Crime Prevention Awareness Ceremony. Chief, that was awesome. Uh, great show, great uh, showcasing our community. It was a great way to celebrate our neighborhood watch club captains. Congratulations to Dee Hertzberger on winning the District 2 Neighborhood Watch Club Captain of the Year. He's always out and about in Monterey and has stayed a strong advocate for the community since 1985. Congratulations also to the other block captains of the year, as well as the Rock Lake Neighborhood Association for winning Watch Group of the Year. And that's all I have, Mayor. Thank you, Commissioner. Move to Commissioner Stewart. Thank you, Mayor. Let me just share a couple of things. But first, let me thank the, um, the uh, council and Regina. Thank you for your work with Edgewater and Jones. They are two very, very special schools. And uh, we ought to recognize that uh, in what's going on in our community. And I appreciate y'all helping us do that. Um, to um, uh, everyone who had a chance last week, we celebrated our 30th anniversary with our sister city partnership with Yorasu Japan. It was a wonderful success. Thank you, Mayor, for, for being part of that. Uh, thank you for Takako Johnson, who is uh, uh, not only is a wonderful professional in her own right, but she also, I think, chairs the committee. Um, Luis Martinez, uh, George, uh, George, <laughs> Georgina. Georgina. I, I never get it right. Between the Georgianas and Georgianas, I never get it right. Um, but thank you very much. I appreciate the work you did, especially uh, with Mayor Yuchita and his wife, Ke Keoko. Uh, it was a good, good time to have them. They were impressed, and we appreciate the work. I want to say a special thanks to Orlando Magic. They uh, provided for us a, a jersey for Mayor Yuchita. I mean, Mayor Yuchita. And he thought that was just the neatest thing in the whole world. So, um, Joel, send my thanks back to, to the group over there. Um, tomorrow morning, uh, as uh, uh, Commissioner Ortiz has said, I'll be leaving to go up to Tallahassee for the uh, work days for the Florida League of Cities uh, to advocate for home rule. Now, um, I will share with you briefly, um, I, I share this, um, I think I've sent each one of these to y'all uh, to have your, um, uh, at your office. It's a great article. I, I read the Orlando Weekly regularly, but I don't ever often quote it. Um, but this is a great article uh, about home rule, what it means, how it affects us, uh, and what's going on in Tallahassee. I'll send you all the link later on if you'd like to share it with some of your constituents. But please, um, uh, we need to make sure that we're working hard to keep decisions to made uh, for, um, for, for our citizens as close to uh, the, the citizens as possible. And cities and counties do that, not people in Tallahassee. So I've got some extra copies if anybody would like some. Um, 
I, Mayor mentioned one of the two events this Saturday. Let me mention another. Their Manila Museum is having their Indie Folk Fest. Runs from 12 to 5. Uh, it's a great uh, way for the family to get together for music and fun. I also want to say a congratulations to Jordana Butler uh, for the, uh, the Crime Prevention and Neighborhood Watch thing. I think um, Chief Rolone, please pass that along to our thanks to her again. A special congratulations to our District 3 Neighborhood Watch Captain of the Year, Queen McCoy. And then the leader of the year uh, for the entire city is Vicki Steely out of Audubon Park. And it was really neat to see their, them recognized. So thank you. Thank you very much for that. And that's all that I have, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. We'll move on to Commissioner Sheehan. Thank you, Mayor. We had uh, great events and weather over the weekend. Paws in the Park was wonderful. We had thousands of doggies running around downtown and playing and having fun. And um, the Pet Alliance actually provides adoptions and affordable pet vet care. So it's very important work that they do and very pleased to be out to support them. And also we had the Asian Lunar New Year, Year Parade in Mills 50. We are very strong in our diversity. The neighborhood embraced it. Everybody had a wonderful time. Again, you know, we're, we're showing, in Orlando, we're showing how we do it right, how we celebrate all of our citizens in their unique culture. Um, I also want to congratulate um, Jones and Edgewater. And I was just telling Commissioner Hill, there was a young man that came up. And, and you know, it's so rewarding to see young people come out of public housing, get their education, and go to college. That is like, that's probably the most rewarding thing that we do, and it's just amazing to see. And it almost made me cry, but it was it was pretty cool to have him come up. And uh, that's just that's the that's the good part of the that's the, that's the great part of the job right here. Um, I also want to say congratulations to Tracy Grouton. She's our District Four Neighborhood Watch Black Block Captain of the Year. That was a wonderful event, and uh, it's really important. You, nobody can care more about your neighborhood than you do. And Neighborhood Watch is a great program to get involved in if you have not uh, participated before. And uh, I also want to add my congratulations to Anna Cruz and the Hispanic Office of Local Assistance working with the Puerto Rico Federal Affairs. They're obtaining birth certificates, death certificates, marriage certificates, the kind of identification and things that people really need and direct to get their direct support assistance. That's, that's really important work, Anna. Thank you for everything that you do to assist others with a smile on your face and a hug, and you just do an amazing job. And that's all I had, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. And we'll move to Commissioner Hill. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge some of the things that's on the agenda today. Uh, we'll be having our first reading uh, for the Black Bottom House of Prayer, which is uh, a historic landmark uh, designation uh, for one of the uh, oldest churches, African-American churches there in Paramore. So we're one step away from designating that as a historic land site. Then, of course, I'll speak on a little later about the exciting uh, news on uh, new business hearings of the sale of or the Orange Lot to the Orlando Magic. There are some great uh, components that I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Greg Lee to speak on, and I will expand on. On uh, 129, myself and Commissioner Burns, with the support of Mayor Dyer and his staff, welcomed the World Conference of Mayors here at the City Hall Rotunda. It was a reception that had all about 200 and community leaders from throughout uh, the nation and the globe, along with some local leaders, uh, with some residents. So it was um, it was a great event attended by all. And I. Uh, on uh, February the 1st, I was fortunate on a rainy Saturday morning to stand in the stead of Mayor Dyer and Commissioner Sheehan over at a ribbon cutting for uh, the new Gilchrist reopening of the McDonald's in your Millennial Central Park. Uh, Mr. Gilchrist uh, actually started his first McDonald's out in your district, uh, Commissioner Stewart, at the OTC Naval Base and now has expanded to over 11 uh, McDonald's here uh, in the city. But with that, he has employed uh, over 400 employees. Uh, he's been in business now 40, 40 decades, making a, a major economic impact and uh, philanthropy here uh, in the city of Orlando. So we want to thank him for his continued support in uh, empowering those uh, through employment. Uh, so great job. Uh, Mr. Gil, Chris, and you and your team. Myself and Kari Burns and Walter Hawkins, uh, along with probably 2,000 other alumni on Saturday morning, 
uh, attended our Tiger Pride there, uh, our Jones High football team. And then from there, we went on over to Camping World Stadium, where we had a fundraiser for the class of 1990 uh, for their 30th year uh, anniversary. We had about 600 people in attendance, so it was it was just great to see uh, the Tiger Pride and uh, that went into all those events. Uh, and it was open to the public, so we'll expect you there. I might let you bring greetings from the city next year, uh, Commissioner Stewart. <laughs> Inside joke, he kissed me about this edge or anything. I'm not gonna let him. <laughs> so, on uh, as Commissioner Burns stated tonight, I'll be over in District Six with him, co-hosting a very important uh, a call to action meeting uh, there at the Dr. Smith Center when it comes to uh, youth and youth involvement and some of the things that, uh, along with uh, Chief Rolone and his team, we want to try to get a handle to on in awareness when it comes to uh, youth delinquency, youth services, mental health, and a multitude of things to empower our youth and the families and reassure the residents that safety is our major focus. So thank you, uh, Chief, uh, for making yourself available at, at such a, a suddenly, because I think we planned this no more than your office did about a week ago. Um, and then uh, we will be having a public meeting at Paramore Oaks, we will be the first time utilizing that community room uh, about the closing uh, a repositioning of Checkers Park. Uh, there will be uh, some construction going on for the next year at the 408 overpass there on Paramore. So we want the public uh, to know about some of the changes for the next year. So that is uh, at six o'clock on February 11th at Paramore Oaks community room. And also, we'll be attending, along with the commission, the mayor's Black History Month celebration. And I'm also uh, excited to hear more from our good friend, Mr. Uh, actually now Dr. Desmond Mead. Dr. Mead uh, was uh, very instrumental uh, with helping us here at the city of Orlando ban the box. And it was because of this leadership on this council and Mary Dyer's leadership, where ban the box uh, was something that wasn't being done throughout the nation. And we were, uh, I think, second here in Florida to ban the box, and that was in May 2015. So again, thank you, uh, council and mayor, for uh, your progressive leadership. And uh, lastly, on February 13th, uh, we will, be having a ribbon cutting along with Mayor Dyer for the first business to open up in the Amelia Court Creative Village uh, space there. Uh, we have not only is, and I, I must, uh, an air transparency, Commissioner Sheehan, I stole this tenant from Thornton Park. Uh, I'll get more. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. And, and she's one of the leading experts on finances. She is an African American, uh, Kimberly Stewart, uh, that uh, has now moved over to the Paramore Creative right. Village. And she is also a resident. So we're offering that space as flex space to truly live, work, and play in Creative Village. And we're just excited to bring her on board there. And with that, all, I'll move the agenda. Second. Motion by Commissioner Hill, second by Commissioner Sheehan. All in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. Uh, aye. aye. Excuse me, Mayor. I forgot because they left, but uh, there was a moment where um, if you saw some young ladies over to our right, maybe your left, that had Jones High uniforms on, those were the Jones High School basketball players. Uh, on Friday, they won uh, the uh, district championship. Wow. And so I wanted to acknowledge them. And I was a Jones High basketball player also. Wow. Yeah. Okay, and that was unanimous on the consent agenda. So we'll now move to new business hearings. Uh, we have one. And this is a public hearing for disposition and sale of city property valued in excess of $500,000 as required by Chapter 13, Section 7 of the City Charter. Notice of the hearing appeared in the Orlando Sentinel on February 4th, 2020. And approval of the sale will require a majority vote of all members of the City Council. The proposed purchaser is Orlando Magic Limited. 
and the property which consists of approximately 2.58 acres is located at 522 West Central Boulevard. The fair market value of the property is $5.1 million, which is also the contract price. At this time, we'll hear a presentation from the Magic. I'd like to call on Greg Lee, who's representing the Magic today. Greg. Thank you, Mayor, Commissioners. Great to see you all today. I appreciate it. Um, 200 South Orange Avenue, um, Suite 2300, with the law firm of Baker and Hostetler representing the Magic. Um, as uh, the Mayor indicated, we've got just a couple things to describe about the property here today. Um, first one is that uh, we do desire to purchase this in order to construct a new practice facility and state-of-the-art um, complex healthcare center uh, for the Paramore Heritage community. Uh, this would be uh, a facility open to the public as far as the healthcare component is concerned. Uh, the Orlando Magic last year purchased the adjacent site next to it behind the HD supply building. And so the purchase of the orange lot from the city of Orlando allows us to utilize the block in between Terry, Division, Central, and, and Pine for these purposes. Um, we have, uh, as the mayor indicated, ordered an appraisal and the valuation was $5.1 million. That's reflected in the uh, contract price. And the contract has some uh, conditions in there for timing. Uh, it's essentially a two-year window of time where we have to commence construction of the project. If not, the city would have a buyback right and the Orlando Magic would pay for, con uh, for closing costs associated with that buyback. And that, uh, that two-year window of time is broken up into six-month uh, increments for you know, different activities. Uh, the anticipated schedule, if you all were to approve this today, um, is that we would uh, begin construction immediately uh, as soon as possible. We would submit a master plan application probably within the next couple weeks that will have more detail about design and, and other features like that. Um, we would like to uh, begin construction in April uh, such that the facility could be opened in the fall of 2021. Um, the Orlando Magic feel that a facility like this is uh, really important to them uh, for to be competitive. It's what a lot of the other uh, ball clubs are doing right now and the added health care component is something that we feel like is also a benefit to the community. We've met with um, Commissioner Hill uh, and we've spoken with her about this project and we truly appreciate your support and leadership working with us. Um, and you've asked us to put together in writing, you know, some additional commitments that we discussed, which, which we have done. <clears throat> and I'm going to pass this on to the clerk so that this can be uh, accompanied with this agenda item. But um, the first one is, notwithstanding the fact that this is uh, not a public procurement, the Orlando Magic are willing to commit to an MBE WBE uh, commitment, um, not just on hiring subs, but on uh, hiring people to work with the general contractor. Um, and so uh, this would also be uh, something where we would focus on uh, people in the Paramore and in the local area, not just MWBE, WBE registered subs. The other thing, um, the second commitment is that we would work to engage in community outreach regarding details associated with the project, have a community meeting, and we'll work with our healthcare uh, partner to provide community programming to the Paramore Heritage uh, community that will also include um, training uh, as outlined in the Blueprint 2.0. So uh, I'll pass this on for, for you. That was a letter executed and uh, provided today by the CEO of the Orlando Magic, Alex Martins. So be happy to answer any questions. Uh, be happy to uh, listen to any comments you might have or if anybody from the public, but Thank you very much for your consideration of this request today, and uh, we would truly appreciate your support. Questions for Greg? Okay, we do have two members of the public that would like to comment. Uh, Mayor, I don't have any questions. I'd just oh, like okay. to uh, say I applaud your efforts to uh, include the MBE, WMBE uh, requirement and then focus on the local uh, individuals coming from here locally. So I, I appreciate that. Commissioner Hill? Yes, thank you, Mayor, and that's what I was going to echo is it's just been a great working with uh, uh, Greg and Alex in the MAGIC organization. Uh, as you know, this is a pri private purchase if we pass it. And uh, 
they did not have to put these components in there because there is no public dollars that will be uh, used in this project. And when we start talking about local participation, that's huge. When we start talking about the spirit of the blueprint and focusing on employment from within that 32805, 32801 zip code, and now when we start talking about true empowerment is training. As you know, uh, the mayor and this council, we are really focused at this tenure on um, committed to vocational training and partnering with our, our Blueprint 2.0 training program with a great organization as Event Advent Health. And then putting those health components in a community where when we start talking about affordable health is much needed. And I'm certain my colleague Bacardi Burns can attest to that. And uh, 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 one thing that I don't think is, is being mentioned is that there will be something that never outside of, uh, maybe you might have an x-ray machine or two, but when we start talking about CAT scan machines, when we start talking about uh, uh, MRI machines, uh, there in the Paramore area, this orthopedic piece being added to this component and added there uh, to the general public. And, and we did have many discussions about, well, it's great for those with insurance like myself, but what about those that don't have insurance? Will it be open to them? And we're working with Advent Health to see if we can put some type of sliding scale component in that piece. So, I mean, this is a win-win for, I think, uh, the Orlando Magic, but more so for the community at large and, and most definitely for the indigenous people of Paramore. So I would ask council to join me today in approving uh, this uh, uh, economic impact, but also uh, uh, this healthier Paramore uh, uh, community piece. Thank you, Mr. Stewart. Great. Thank you very much, Mayor. Um, one of the things I think also we need to look at, I think you and I spoke about, was the connection to the Creative Village, the connection to UCF and Valencia. We now have a uh, what would be a walking distance uh, training facility of some sort, both an orthopedic and not. So we'd be able to kind of connect into the health side of that um, in the uh, UCF. So I'd love to be able to see it, the expanded once we get operating, expanding that to be able to provide some additional uh, classes, uh, some connection, better internships, especially for those coming out of the Paramore area, Literally, ex not only just getting better service, but actually working there as well. You do realize Creative Village is in Paramore, right? <laughs> no, <laughs> so it is in that, it's, no, in that about... it's in that Paramore heritage component, yeah. because if you look at the Paramore comprehensive plan, it's all inclusive. It's, Paramore don't stop on Robinson Street. Well, I, I, I think you're misunderstanding. No, no, I'm just uh, health, terrified. Health, 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 as a, health as an outlet has not been one of the focuses of the Creative Village. It's been social service and legal and other stuff. I'm trying to, trying to figure out, make sure that we have health oh, component you. as an extension of the UCF in Valencia at this location with the, having the medical system right there. Um, uh, that's, I'm sorry, I, I, I want more opportunities for students that are coming to, they're, they're, they're living and moving all the way from kindergarten through college in the Paramore area. This is one of those other opportunities that are right at our fingertips. So um, yeah, I think, it's, I think it's a great idea and just would want to make sure everybody gets a chance to not only be served, but also to serve in the same location. Absolutely, Commissioner. And um, you know, we did, uh, I spoke to the match about that and that's certainly one of the things they're going to you know, coordinate with their partner on as well. So. The other thing which is a, um, when you look at the Fairmore plan, this area is, um, um, this particular piece of property is logical to where it is in terms of that extension of that entertainment district, which is really a nice way to, to be able to uh, um, continue that down to the soccer stadium. Uh, and I think it's a great extension. It's a good complement to the plan. It is a good location between the Amway Center and the soccer stadium. And then the other thing is we'll have five million plus into our real estate acquisition fund that we're going to have opportunities and some flexibility to do some other things yet unforeseen with. And then this piece of property is not currently on the tax rolls and Absolutely. will now be on the CRA tax rolls for the increment. So, OK, we do have a couple of requests for appearance or to talk on this matter. First one is Lawana Gelser. Well, 
Lana Gelza, 7674 St. Stephen's Court, Orlando, 32835. When I read the details of everything, now that you've added a few components that we don't have a copy of and it, things do happen, I was more concerned about the price, but I was concerned more about as is. And as an individual who's been watching a lot of the sales of property in the Paramore community, or the giveaways of the potential of economic gain, I, it reminded me of what transpired with the old OPD headquarters, and that we sold it to the Magic for less than $13 million. And then in return, we built a new facility, OPD headquarters on South Street, and OBT, and we went $10 million over budget. It's supposed to have been $55 million, cost more. I'm more concerned about remediation. I want to make sure no remediation dollars are charged to the community or the city, the people, to clean up any damage, any remediation, um, environmental situation. It says as is. So um, I don't know if there's a component somewhere else, but I was very concerned about that. But I always hear about economic growth. I hear about a lot of things and how it's going to happen, benefit the community. And I can't say it will not, but, but then I do have an economic background. And I follow the dollars. So if that's the market rate, $5.1 million, so be it. But currently, there's parking going on on that property. So there's a loss of some type of revenue to the city of Orlando for monthly parking. And when I looked at the financial impact and what we were gaining to put the money, put that on the roll, I could not ascertain or see how much we was losing as far as revenue and was it a more money for us it being on the tax rolls or would it be the same? So what would be the economic gain? And then to hear that they added um, a health component, that might be great for those who don't have insurance and stuff like that. And I understand about training. But when we talk about health, I don't see training and health being the same. I'm glad you mentioned what you said, Commissioner Stewart, because I'm concerned about merging, that we don't keep duplicating. So everybody that's in that community can utilize. But it brings me back to if we're losing money from parking, how much are we losing from parking? Because we lost a parking garage and revenue when we sold the OPD headquarters and all of that previously to the Magic. And have we regained what we have lost? Because it's still not built, so is the taxes that they're paying on that vacant lot equaling to what we have lost? And when we finally get it, once they build, but we don't know when that building's going to happen. And I want to make sure there's no remediation. But if we're doing all of this, and we're talking about a healthy community, I've been before this council for quite some time. And still today, we have yet to commission a health disparity study in the Paramore community. How can you talk about it when I've seen us spend millions of dollars on remediation, but you don't talk about the people who've been in that community suffering for quite some time? See, I'm not going to go away. I don't get discouraged. I'm not worried if you agree with me or not. The point is the community has been waiting for a while for a health disparity study. And in January of 2018, Mayor Dyer, specifically your office told the Hubbardton Post that they were going to do a health disparity in 2020. I have been watching to look to see where it's going to happen, if it's going to happen. And if it's going to happen, I would hope that those who have been adamantly wanting to participate in this study be at the table and once again not on the menu. So I don't have a problem with the project. I'm just concerned about information not being readily available to see if it's an economic gain for the citizens and if it's something that's going to take a while to get to. That should be there and it's never there. It's something you have to request, request and figure out at a later date. So have a wonderful day and thank you. Thank you for your testimony, Tiffany Hughes. Tiffany Hughes, 
KBI Staffing Solutions, 711 South Paramore Avenue, Orlando, Florida, 32805. Good afternoon, Mayor Dyer, council members, and city of Orlando constituents. Um, my comment is actually less on the purchase of Orlando, kind of circling back to Goa. Um, as a small business, KBI Staffing Solutions has been working with the Greater Orlando Aviation Authority and more specifically, Turner Kiewit Joint Venture um, on the South Terminal C project for the last four years. Uh, I actually Tiffany, think these comments would be more appropriate at general appearance than on okay. this particular item, mm -hmm. unless this relates somehow to the purchase and sale of this property. I'd ask you to, to wait till general appearance, and I'll be in Absolutely. about 10 minutes. Okay, thanks. Okay, Commissioner Hill, you got a motion? Yeah, yeah. motion approved. Second. Motion by Commissioner Hill, second by Commissioner Sheehan. Additional discussions among commissioners. Hearing none, all in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the motion carries. Thank you all. Congratulations, Commissioner Hill. Okay, hearings, ordinances, second reading. Number one, Madam Clerk. Ordinance. Ordinance 2020-9, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Orlando, Florida, amending Chapter 18A, Parks and Outdoor Public Assemblies of the Code of the City of Orlando by amending Section 18A.01, Definitions, to correct Scrivener, Scrivener's errors, amending 18 a-02 to change hours of operation for various parks and adding two new parks and to correct Scrivener's errors. Amending section 18A.06 to change park hours. Amending section 18A.09 to correct Scrivener's errors, providing for codification, severability, correction of Scrivener's error, and an effective date. Second. Motion by Commissioner Sheehan, second by Commissioner Hills. Or anyone from the public like to discuss this matter? Uh, we do have one card, Lawana Gelzer. You still got time to put one in. Lawana Gelzer, 7674 St. Stephen's Court, Orlando, 32805. I mean, 32835. Been in Paramore a little bit too much today. Um, I came before you two weeks ago on this matter, and I asked some questions, and it took me about two weeks to get the information. I was very concerned about the closing of the parks, but I, I realized I was more concerned about the enforcement of 18A. And I want to say thank you to um, Attorney Williams for assisting me um, today to get this information and maneuvering me through the city um, website to find it. But I asked the question two weeks ago, why now? So I come before you today to say why now. My main concern about it was that African Americans make up 13% of the population of the United States, 40% of the homeless population. And I was more concerned about Checker Park and uh, the park uh, rally. They were both on Paramore and changing the ordinance to read not sleeping but lying. But I was concerned about the enforcement who would enforce the rules and what would the enforcement be? Now, I was assured that it would have to be multiple, multiple times somebody violated. But I asked how would the people be notified? They said signs and maybe a community meeting. But these are two parts that a lot of people utilize that are homeless. So I don't think they'll be able to get any literature or know about the brochures that might be printed. But what startled me is what the rules were that they could be charged $500, could be the fine, and up to 60 days in jail. And that might not sound like a lot because you're saying, oh, well, they should go somewhere else or have any other options. But we have a homeless problem in the Central Florida community, in the Orlando area, and in that area, because for many years we've asked for you to do something about the parks. But now I see that because of the population is changing, and I'll be honest, I think it's because people of a lighter hue are moving to the community. We gotta make sure they feel safe that we're just gonna penalize those who are down and out and have nowhere to go. 
So I was informed that it would take between 30 to 60 days to start enforcing these rules and regulations. Yet there's no signage. We're working on the signage. There's not been a community meeting. There's not been anything that we can work with the homeless population to let them know this is coming. Now, I know somebody that might violate the rule unknowingly, but I don't want somebody to get a $500 fine or be in jail up to 60 days or can be sentenced to both by the judge. It might not trouble you because we're trying to make sure we do the right thing for everybody. But can it be a longer period? Can we work with the homeless coalitions and others to make sure those individuals know this is about to happen to them? So nobody is being faced, because I guarantee you, if you're homeless, there's a strong possibility you don't have $500 to pay a fine. And most likely, it could be up to 60 days. And I said to you two weeks ago, I was concerned about the over-policing in Paramore. I know I saw a lot of that happening at Lake Eola because a lot of the homeless said what was happening, they, literally they couldn't charge their phones, they had to be gone, they couldn't be around for so long. And I know we're trying to cater to everybody, but when we're trying to deal with everybody, are we harming those who are of need of our services the most? And I say they're in need of our services the most. So I just saw us sell some property to match it. Maybe they could set aside a scholarship fund to help those who might not be able to pay these fines. Or can we wait to see if there's something else we can do? Because Mayor Dye, you have someone that works in your cabinet, I suppose, over the homeless. I've not seen that person hear no conversation about this. And two weeks have passed. I've reached out to make sure the community would know this impact. And still today, all I know is 18A, $500 fine, up to 60 days, or you can get both. And I'm concerned. Why are we doing this today? And why to these two parks and why did we change it from sleeping to lying in the park? So if somebody's there too long, it's up to the interpretation of OPD. And like I said before, we've been over-policed in 32805 enough. So I, I would urge you to look at this a little bit better, but it's the second reading, but not the 60, 30 to 60 days, maybe on 90 days and have a community meeting. Thank you, Mayor Dyer. Thank you for your testimony. Mayor, can I, can I just clarify that we do have a... Commissioner Hill. Thank you, Mayor. I just want to clarify for those at home and in, in the um, chamber that on, as I mentioned earlier, during the community updates, that on February the 11th, there will be a community meeting at the Paramore Oaks Community Room um, about Checkers Park. And uh, I would... Uh, it is open to all, and also I'd like to let council know that we have and we are canvassing that area to actually put the literature and flyers in there in some of our homeless residents' hands because we do understand many of them don't have a mailbox to go to. So we are on foot going out and making uh, our residents of all going door to door and there at Checkers Park. Uh, and we, we, we do want to make sure, especially there at Checkers Park, uh, because it is so close to the roadway and we have folks that's laying on the ground, it could be a very, uh, it's a safety hazard to have our residents uh, laying on the sidewalk when cars are going north and south. So we want to make sure that all of our residents are safe, not just some. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Commissioner. Further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion indicate. So by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. All right, ordinances on first reading number one, Madam Clerk. Ordinance number 2020-7, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Orlando, Florida, relating to historic preservation, designating certain real property generally located north of Bentley Street, east of Northwest Moreland Drive, west of Beach Avenue and south of West Livingston Street, addressed as 921 Bentley Street as an Orlando Historic Landmark, providing for severability, correction of Scrivener's errors, and an effective date. Uh, move to approve. 
I, Motion by Commissioner Hill, second by Commissioner Sheehan. I see some uh, of the leaders here from the Orlando Land Trust. Would you like the opportunity to speak? Yeah. 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 Okay. All right, that'll be it. I move approval. Okay. Let's see. We already had a motion and a second, right? Yeah, we had a motion and a second. Motion and a second. All in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. All right, and number two. Ordinance number 2020-8, an ordinance of the City of Orlando granting Schwartz Family Venture LLC DBA Red Box Plus of Orlando a non-exclusive franchise to provide roll-off container collection and disposal of solid waste within the City of Orlando, outlining franchisees' duties and providing the term and conditions under which such franchise shall operate, providing for severability and an effective date. Motion by Commissioner Sheehan, second by Commissioner Stewart. This may be Commissioner Burns's first roll-off franchise. We have these <laughs> <laughs> fairly frequently, interestingly enough, that we have to approve every right. roll-off franchise <laughs> by ordinance. Um, okay, discussion. Hearing none, all in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. All right, that concludes the agenda business of the Orlando City Council. You're up next. Thank you.